Hosea chapter 10. Can we commence reading at verse 1? Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, we have no king because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of beth Avon, For the people thereof shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it. For the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. It shall be also carried on to Assyria for a present to King Jarob. Ephraim shall receive shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, her king is cut off as the foam upon the water. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. O Israel, they ascend from the days of Gibeah. There they stood, the, the battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chastise them. The people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is as an heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clods. So to yourselves in righteousness reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness upon you. We'll end a reading there please at the verse 12. And again, we pray the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word to our hearts this evening. Just before our time of prayer tonight, I want to draw your attention to that verse 12 of Hosea and the chapter 10. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness upon you. God has a word for Israel. God has a word for Ephraim and Samaria. And in this book and in this chapter, we see that Israel is reproved for their sins and chastening is upon them. And you know, whether we are reading in our Old Testament or whether we are reading in our New Testament, there is always that word, that word from the Lord to call us back to himself. You think of the very last book of the Bible and the letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. The Lord in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks and how there was that counsel and that rebuke and that challenge to the churches then that there would be repentance and that there would be a returning to the Lord. It is ever so, of course, that the Lord continually speaks to his people. 
and he, he's doing it here. And he does it in the New Testament and he has done it all down through the years until this very present time. And I, I just want to take this verse 12 as an encouragement, a word from the Lord to my own heart and to yours as we gather here this Wednesday night. And I see in this verse, uh, we might call it personal revival, a call to the Lord's people. And I want to just leave with you from this verse five simple thoughts uh, this evening. First of all, I want you to notice the description that is given here. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. Now notice these words, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Is that not a description of revival? Is it not a description of the Lord visiting his people? Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. We see, therefore, the source of this is in God himself. God himself, till he come. You know, we sing the hymn, Here in thy name we are gathered, Come and revive us, O Lord, there shall be showers of blessing thou hast declared in thy word. Come and revive us, O Lord. There must ever be in our Christian lives today this constant looking to the Lord. O oh, graciously hear us, graciously hear us, we pray. Pour from thy windows upon us showers of blessing today. Isn't this a lovely description of the Lord coming? And notice, and rain righteousness upon you. The Lord coming, and this comes from above. This is from the Lord. It is not worked up by us. The Lord comes and he rains righteousness upon the people. What a wonderful description it is of God doing a gracious and a merciful thing. You know, just listening to our pastor on Sunday morning about the Reformation and uh, he just really dealt with a uh, couple of things I, I missed Sunday night uh, on um, John Knox, but it, it did, again, give me a hunger to read all about it again, to read what God did back then and what God has done even since then, the evangelical awakening, the times of revival. And this is what God has done and can do. He comes and he rains righteousness upon the church. And if we even take that little phrase, it would be a good phrase to pray before the Lord. O oh Lord, come and rain righteousness upon us. You know, when you look at this chapter of the Word of God uh, leading up to this verse, we see that there were three things that marked the people. First of all, there was no fruitfulness for God. If you look at verse 1 of chapter 10, Israel is an empty vine. Well, that's not good. Not good to go out to the vine, out to the tree, out to the field and find it's empty. You know, when we 
when we lived in Greenwell Street, Upper Greenwell Street, we had an apple tree in our backyard. And oh, it was great to see it <laughs> laden down with apples. And they were pretty good apples, if I remember. Pretty sweet. And we thought, how on earth did the Jamisons get an apple tree? Well, I don't know, whoever was in that house before us must have planted it. But it was really wonderful to go out and see this tree laden with fruit. The branches bowed down with these apples. But the Lord says Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit, yes, but unto himself. And according to the multitude of his fruit, he has built altars and groves and images. In other words, there's been a, a lack of acknowledging God and the true God and being filled with thankfulness to the Lord. The Lord. I was sitting last night watching a wee bit of the news and it struck me, you know, have you ever noticed the rallies that are going on in the United States at the moment for the presidential election? And I think every single time, now I might be wrong there because I haven't seen them all, but it appears that every, it must be a thing they do when they're uh, about to bring on the candidate who's running, they say, and now I want you to Welcome the next president of the United States. How do they know that? <laughs> That's him. I remember uh, Dr. Paisa, there was, there was one time, you remember the days when it took ages to count the votes in Northern Ireland? And uh, it, it had been held over to the very next week. And I remember him looking at the newsletter and he always had his sermon titles, and he was preaching that Sunday night, Election Secrets. That was his, the title of his message, which I thought was very good, Election Secrets. And, of course, he was talking about divine election. But as not, that's what they do. You see, this thing, taking it for granted, what they should say is, God willing. God willing. And so it is with Israel, there's this no fruitfulness towards God. If you look at verse 2, there's no following after God. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Other things have come in to take away their heart from the true and living God who said, thou shalt not make any graven image. And then you'll see in verse three, there's no fear of the Lord. For now they shall say, we have no king because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? No fruitfulness for God. No following after God. No fear of God. This is so true even in our lives today in New Testament times. What is the purpose of God in our lives uh, after we're saved that we would bring forth fruit unto him? Isn't that what the Lord Jesus said? He said, I have ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. The Bible talks about Philippians 1 and 11, the fruits of righteousness. Romans 6 and 22, fruit unto holiness. Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the Spirit. Colossians 1 and 6, the fruit of the gospel. The Savior talked about beareth fruit, bringeth forth more fruit, bringeth forth much more fruit. And this ought to mark the lives of the people of God, and it was absent. Think of those words, verse 1, Israel is an empty vine, an empty vine, following after God. 
Savior said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Follow me, he said, and I will make you fishers of men. The Bible talks about follow things that make for peace. Follow after charity. Follow after that which is good. Follow righteousness. Whose faith follow, Hebrews, and follow his steps. So the Christian life should be marked with fruitfulness. It should be marked with this following after God, and it should be marked with this reverential fear of God. Not a slavish fear, not a fear that makes us run from God, but a a fear that makes us run to God with a desire to please him and a desire to, to serve him. In Acts chapter 9, 31, we read this, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Multiplied. So we see that the the sad thing about Israel at that time was the absence of fruitfulness for God a following after God, their heart was divided, and the fear of God. And yet the Lord says, the words of verse 12, isn't he merciful? Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. There's the description of it this blessing from God till he come and rain righteousness upon you. But notice there's decision in this verse because we read the words, for it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. Daniel He says in chapter 9, verse 3 of his book, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fastings and sackcloth and ashes. He set his face because of the time that was brought to his attention through God's word. He would seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. And this is a time to seek the Lord. Don't know if you noticed that case of that fella, young fella, who, because of this um, AI, artificial intelligence, he was doing things with photographs of children and sending them to men, probably mostly men anyway, and charging 80 pound a time. Artificial intelligence, the, the, the very devil, a devilish thing. Was well, it not time to seek the Lord? Maybe you're here tonight, and maybe you're thinking about your own life, And uh, life is passing. I never thought I'd be 64. (laughs) And Roy's saying, sure, that's nothing. (laughs) But isn't it true? But, you know, life goes by. And what is left of our life? It is time to seek the Lord. And we see that what's around us and about us It is time to seek the Lord. When we think about our own lives going by, it is time to seek the Lord. Decision. The description and the decision. Notice the determination. Because he speaks here in verse 12, break up your fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. Now, I don't know much about farming. I used to... 
help in uh, Kenny Manown Seniors Farm during the summer holidays. But the farmers know about breaking up fallow ground, ground that has been left. It has become compacted. Although I don't know much about farming, I know that tiny wee bit about gardening. <laughs> and uh, I went out the other day, just at the borders in the front of the house there, and I pulled out all the nasturtiums. They were, it was like a jungle. They had gone wild. And uh, then I was putting in the shovel and turning it over and turning it over and, you know, going down it like this here with the edge of the spade and breaking it up, breaking it up <coughs> to let the light in and the air in and the rain in. Well, that's the thought here. Break up your fallow ground, fallow ground, ground that has been left to itself. Left to itself. Has there something, perhaps, as we examine our own lives before God, that there's been things we have left? We've left. Maybe it's our own personal prayer life or Bible reading or witnessing. See, fallow ground can become hard and it also can be overtaken with weeds. Notice there in verse number four, they have spoken words swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up as hemlock in the furrows of the field. This was a poisonous weed. Poisonous weed. And so the Lord is saying to them, look, you need to break up your fallow ground. Dig again around the roots. Dig again around the roots and seek to bear fruit again unto me. And is that not a, a, a lifelong, really, job as a Christian? And it, it, we come to the Lord's house on a Sunday morning, come to the Lord's house on a Sunday night, come to the Lord's house on a Wednesday. We had the week with our brother, uh, Puyan, and there's this continually, we're, we're hearing it in our own spirit, in our own soul, in our conscience. We're hearing it. It is time to seek the Lord and to break up the fallow ground. So there's a description here till he come and rain righteousness upon us. A decision that it's time to seek the Lord. Determination, break up your fallow ground. That can be back breaking. And you go out and do that and then you come in and sit down and you say, oh, oh I'm sore. See there, here, number four, there's devotion. You know, the Lord calls them, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Does that not speak of a devoted Christian life? Sow to yourselves in righteousness. You know, the Roman Catholic Church speaks a lot about devotion. And if you ever read a, a, their catechism, I, got a, I bought a catechism in a Roman Catholic bookshop in Dublin years ago and still have it. And you know, they have their devotions. Though they're to, to Mary and to the saints and Padre Pio and this and that. Yin. But they have their devotions. And a, a, a faithful Roman Catholic every day will read their, or go through their rosary. They won't miss it. And you know, in Protestantism, do we have this life of devotion to the Lord that we'll not miss our Bible reading and will not miss our prayer time and will not miss uh, just looking to the Lord and seeking the Lord. So to yourselves in righteousness. You know, we have that warning in the book of Galatians. And mind you, it's not to sinners. These words are, are written to, to a church. 
and uh, how that we are to walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And it speaks about uh, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But listen to these words in chapter 6. And again, these are words to a Christian. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. This devotion, a devoted Christian life, so to yourselves in righteousness. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 5 to 10 talks about cultivating the graces of the Christian life, how we're to add. I remember Dr. Cairns did a week on that with us years ago. We are to add to our faith and to the various graces. And so we see this devotion. So do yourselves in righteousness. But then finally, I want you to notice there's delight here. Because notice what he says. So do yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. And it's those words, reap in mercy. You know, our God delighteth. The Bible says God delighteth in mercy. He delighteth to show mercy. And here's another text in the Bible speaking of the mercy of God. So do yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. In other words, God is promising here, I'll bless you. I will bless you. If you sow to yourselves in righteousness, you'll reap in mercy. Is this not a delight? Is this not something to encourage us and indeed to encourage us to want it? Encourage us to want it, to experience it, the blessings of God as God is merciful unto us in our day, the day in which we live. So here it is, and the, the backdrop is, of course, judgment, and the backdrop is the chastening of God upon Israel. And yet here's this lovely verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness upon you. May the Lord bless these few thoughts to our hearts tonight and may we even mark that verse and be encouraged to read it over again and pray that verse even before the Lord 